boys and girls welcome back to the channel we are here the next day I am uploading a video right now as we speak it is processing right now I believe heck it might even be uploaded but I have to edit the title and all that stuff but I have got some stuff I need to do today uh, could probably make a couple different videos out of it to be honest but I'm, I'm not going to do the first one because you guys have already seen me do this. And this is the freaking wiper linkage bushings. My windshield wipers don't work. Uh, I did this once and then I will, like two days later they broke again because it sleeted and iced my windshield over and I accidentally left the windshield wipers on so as soon as I bumped the key the next morning they turned on and snapped the bushings off. What do you know? So. And it's been raining, and I've been driving with just rain X, hoping that I can see, and I'm done with that. So we're going to do windshield wiper bushings because that's a safety hazard, I'm sure, to everybody else. And uh, it just needs to be done. It is a pain in the butt, I will tell you that. I hate doing it. I cut up my hands every time I do it. If you have a girlfriend or something that's pretty mechanically inclined and has small hands, this would be the job for her because... I, I, I just can't, I don't know, there's not a lot of room to work and I always cut my hands up trying to do this. Then after that, we are going to do injector washers. Uh, number three and four are leaking, so we're going to do those. And I just noticed my lift pump has a kink in the line, which would explain a lot of things. So we'll probably fix that too, which that should take five, ten minutes maybe. So I'm not going to video this first part because... I've, like I said, I've done a video over it. You guys don't need to see any more of it. And But I will put you guys on kind of like step by step for the injectors and how to pull them and all that good stuff. But as for now, uh, if Derek does not buy these wheels and the tires, they will be for sale. If he buys the wheels only, he I'll have the tires for sale. But as you can, I mean, everything's nice. The tires are literally, I mean, they're brand new. They have like 500 miles on them. The wheels are nice. I need to throw a little polish on them and they'll be good to go. Probably going to be asking like 2800 2700 for the whole setup. Uh, which that's pretty, pretty fair. All I'm trying to do is get out what I have in them. Not the tires. Obviously I'm taking a I'm I'm not charging brand new costs for the tires. That'd be ridiculous. I've drove a little bit on them so they aren't brand new anymore. And I do understand that. So Let's get on with it. Uh, let's get this, get things rolling. I'm gonna pull off the cowl, the wipers, all that good stuff. I want to pull off the hood, but I don't think I will. It is a hassle to have to work because you gotta work right here, and I don't know. Having the hood off just helps a lot more. But I don't have anybody here to help me yet. Guthrie will probably be on his way. Keller will probably come out. It's the usual, uh, the whole gang. But yeah, I'm gonna get on with it. And hopefully we can get some stuff accomplished today because it's been not happening lately so as most of you guys know first thing that I'd normally do if I know the task pretty well like I've already done this before I know what tools I need so I'm gonna go ahead and get out all the tools I need and lay them out so I'll have everything right by me ready to go and I can just start hacking away at this and the most challenging part of this is 100% getting the cowl back under the uh, windshield gasket. That is a pain in the butt. So I'm going to get all my tools out and get after this and I will turn you guys back on whenever we do injectors. Alright guys, let's get this started. So step number one for me anyway, I go ahead and I take off, which a lot of you guys don't have these, you don't like them for some reason, why, I don't know. Take off my beauty cover, or parts tray as some of you call it. So now that that's off, uh, a little bit more clearance, the lines go between the valve cover blocks, obviously. So Next, what I do is take the little hold downs out of the injector line hold downs. So there's one right here, one right here, and there's two in the back, and you'll see them. They're very easy to see, they're all 10 millimeter. So that's a little hint for you. So now that I have those out, I now start undoing the lines. I broke these front three loose and I have not done the back three yet. 
The only ones that are leaking are three and four, so I'm just gonna pull the lines off of all of them, and the only ones I'm gonna mess with are number three and number four, but I'll have to bleed the whole system anyway after I'm done. So, now that I've kinda told you guys that, some specialty things that you will need. Uh, I've got my pack of washers in here and all that stuff. Uh, this is my way of getting them off. I did not buy, I didn't buy a injector puller. I don't know, it's, you, can, you can make them yourself. I just have a hard time paying for stuff that you really, it doesn't take a genius to make. And all I use is the right size thread nut. Uh, I forget what size this is, but you can literally Google it and the very first thing will pop up on a forum. It'll tell you the size of the threads for a non-intercooled injector and then an intercooled truck injector. So I get this and then I get the claw end of a hammer and I put it under it and I just pop it real easy with my hand and nine times out of ten they pop out for me. I've had these injectors out multiple times before. You guys that those things have been in there and are solid or really stuck in there from when the truck was new, you may have to buy an injector puller or figure out something like that. But for me, this is all I need. Mine had 5x12s in it before this and this is still all I did. I just popped it pretty hard with uh, the claw end of a hammer just kind of I don't know I'll show you guys how I do it you'll understand and I stay off the threads I mean it doesn't it doesn't hurt anything they pop right out it's I mean it usually only takes one or two little pops and it comes out so with that being said I'm probably gonna set you guys up on the stand we'll get these things loose but before I do that I've got my handy air hose here which I recommend air hose or brake clean either way you're gonna need brake clean so I got the air hose and I'm blowing out everything around here so no junk or dirt and debris can get down in the injector holes whenever I pull them or whenever I take the lines off. You don't want any sort of contamination. And in these 12 valves, that's very possible. So got my air hose. We're going to blow this all out really good and make sure there's no dirt or debris that can get down in the injector holes. And then we're going to pull, start pulling stuff off. So I'm going to set you guys up on the stand over here on the side or something like that so you guys can see what's going on. So right now, at this moment, I do not have the light with me. Well, I have it with me, but it's on the charger right now. So once the light gets charged, I'll get you guys up a little bit closer, and obviously you'll be able to see more. So we'll have to just wait a little bit for that. But in the meantime, let's blow this all off. We got lots of stuff out. That was pretty pretty good. There's a lot of stuff in the back, which there always is because the hood. You guys can't see it, but I can feel the stuff coming up and hit me in the face. Pretty good. Seems pretty clean. Ah. Well. Alright, so. These are loose. Let your truck cool off before you do this. Mine's been sitting for almost three hours and it's still hot as crap. So, just take a mental note. So the front three, that's free, which is good. Make sure there's no junk down in there already. Just kind of bend these up out of the way. Some people don't like doing that. Some people don't care. I'm one of those that don't really care. I don't want to pull off the lines from the injection pump. This is the one that never wants to go on, so this could be really bad.
All right, guys. Sorry, I'm back. I got a phone call. So now we got the lines off. Next thing I do is take a 10 millimeter and get all the little return line bolts off, which are the ones that go into the side of the injector. I'm sure most of you guys know what that is. They're just one per injector, and you really got to be careful with these things whenever you're putting them on when, and when you're taking them off. These are not a normal bolt. They're a little banjo bolt, and you cannot lose them. So be very careful whenever you're doing this. Take your time. There's no rush. It's not worth losing one of these because I did so, and it's just, it's not good. I'll tell you that. So with that being said, I'm going to grab a 10 mil, and we're going to get after it. I got lucky enough to find a ratchet wrench. 10 mil, which never happens, so I'm gonna use it. Tighter, it's looser. Oh, no, that is loose. Really didn't want to take these things off, but got to. There's really no way around it. This is the one I dropped the last time, so the goal right now is to not lose this one. Alright, got one. Put it in my little metal tray. All right, so all of the banjo bolts are out. Return line is now free. Be careful with this little baby. Very delicate, and you do need it. So now that those are off, we go along. And I, if you guys are replacing injectors, you'll start at the front or wherever you want and take all the injectors out. But for me, I just need to mess with number three and number four. So I'm gonna get my, I believe, I've already got it here. And I believe it is 15 sixteenths. Yeah, 15 sixteenths end wrench. Uh, or I'm not sure that'll work. I'm probably going to have to get a really long socket if I can find one. Or a really long, deep 15 sixteenths. We're going to put that on there and break these things loose. And then we will take the, the hold down nuts off. Then we'll pop the injectors out. So I'm going to go find a socket and I'll be right back. Guys, we're back with some heavier gear. I ended up getting a torque wrench and a longer socket. All right, so that shows you how far having a little bit longer ratchet or torque. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm losing words here. Torque wrench will go. Helps out tremendously. Alright. So, the injector is not ready to come out now. As most of you know. 
So here's a little hold down nut, has a little rubber gasket on top, and I've got all those too. So we'll put this over to the side, and then we're going to get on the next one. They're only supposed to be like 44 foot pounds or something like that, but people usually take them higher than that because they don't seal. Me being one of those people. I'm using my glove to kind of sit on here, but well, that's the wrong one. Put my knee on because I don't have a, a uh, top side creeper even though I need one very badly now that it has a four inch lift. But my valve cover blocks are still very hot, so kinda need a glove. Alright, so well, we've got that. And we got our other hold down. So for me, that part's done. For you guys, you've got to take out all, all of those. So now, we've got our, I need to look at this one injector because it looks kind of boogered but we will see top of it might need a tap ran over it now it still looks good all right so we're going to put our little nut just like that screws right down on top of there now i'm going to go get our hammer or your uh if you have a cow's foot or a crow's foot whatever you want to call them if you have one of those that might work Alright, so I'm get this under here. Keep our return line out of the way. That's gonna be a big key. It's not breaking anything. So, just like that, we got our first injector pulled and it looks pretty dirty. This is why you need brake clean. Alright guys, now we have the light, which is good. You can see a lot better down in there. out the dog is not gonna like this Daisy it's okay all right I need to get a wire brush down in there and hit it with that and then blow it out again Alright, I have a ton of these little brushes, but it's a nice little handle with one, and then I've got a little bit bigger one with me as well, just to kind of clean up the injector boards. This is probably the most important part, and of course, I don't have any brake clean because nobody around here ever keeps any or thinks about having any, or uses all, the, all of it that I have. 
go figure. But we're gonna try and clean these things up a little bit. clean now I'm happy with that they look really good so injector boards are nice and clean and take that off now we can put our new little copper washers on and I'll show you guys how I do that and the way I like to go about that so we're gonna put the good one in I might have to go over the threads on another one but I may get you down bag whenever I buy these things I buy like two or three at a time they're like 11 bucks on eBay off of oh it's called the diesel speed shop and these are this is what they say they are the thin washers so you guys can get that thin washers they say 91 and a half to 1998 intercooled 12 valve Cummins injector install kit thin kit so these are the ones I used from last time there is I'm gonna use the last of those washers and I'm gonna use the rest of these and we'll get on with it um, I have my grease gun here and you're thinking Gavin why do you need grease for and I'm just gonna use a little bit uh, this is a technique that some of you guys know some of you guys don't so we have quite a few good washers here there's probably four so there's two of them. I'm just gonna take one for now and get a tad bit of this grease. We're just gonna put it on the bottom of the washer. I've seen this technique used by a few people. Wipe the rest off on my rag. I think this is a good one. And now I cleaned off the bottom here. And basically, I mean, all we're going to do is put that on there. Try and not get any of that grease on the tip. And what the grease does is it helps it stick right there so it doesn't fall off whenever you go to put the injector in. It's kind of a neat little deal. Make sure I didn't get any grease on the tip here. So, just like that. And this one should be good to go to drop back in there. So instead of carrying you guys back over there, all I'm going to do and just go throw this in. We're going to give this one some attention. The threads are a little iffy. We're going to figure out what's going on with those. I think it might be the injector line, the cap that screws on there. I think that's the problem. But just to play it safe, we're going to run a tap over this just to make it nice and clean, and hopefully it'll be good to go. And might run a, a, a tap up in that line. But yeah, that's all you're going to do. This is I buy the thin washers because uh, that's just what I was recommended. I think it's to do something with the spray angle and it hits the ball better or something. I always forget what they say, but I'm going to go throw this in real quick and I'll get back to you guys. Alright, so I did, I do have a big box of taps and dies, but this puppy is 1.5 by 12 or 12 by 1.5 or something. And I do not have any of those in here that I can see. So we're just going to put it back on and hopefully it's good to go. I don't know what the deal is with it. I think one of my, I think I'm going to need new injector lines, which I'll probably just get powder coated or polished ones next, but I think that's my problem. So we're going to go over here and throw this one back in. But first of all, I mean, we got to put our washer on then we'll go put it back in. But whenever you put the injectors in and you drop them down in the hole, try and not touch the sides of the walls or anything with the injector tip and it'll stop and you need to it'll if you push really hard it'll snap back in and I will show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here in a second once I get the washer on these and we'll go over there and I'll show you what I mean 
All right, so we're gonna pop number three back in, and I've got the washer on. About to show you guys what I mean by pop it back in. My bore is all nice and clean, so drop it straight down. Don't touch the walls. So just like that. Popped right back in, and now we are good to go. See, putting lines back on is gonna be kind of tedious, but we will definitely get it figured out. So, first thing we put on is the hold down nuts. So I'm gonna get the little washers for those. Put those on. Uh, this one's definitely in. I can't tell if this one's in or not. No? Doesn't feel like it's in. Maybe I was wrong. The other one snapped in pretty good. This one... This one might not want to go near as bad. No, no, they're both like that. Never mind. Set this down on top of it. So we'll take them to 45 first. And see where, where they go from there. I'm probably going to take them up higher than that. Okay, so there's 45. I think the torque spec's 44. Uh, like I said earlier, a lot of people take them higher than that. I've taken mine to, I think, 60 because they would not seal. And here we are again, replacing injector washers. All right. So, take them up to fifty five. It's pretty snug there. I don't want to take it much higher than that, so let's hope they seal good. Sometimes those little black O-rings like to come back up, so push those back down onto the tops of there. Make sure it's all nice and snug. Alright, now I'm going to put the uh, return line washers and bolts in, the little banjo bolts. And after that, we'll put the regular lines back on. But you guys get the idea of how it's going, so it's pretty pretty simple. I'm going to turn you guys back off and go get my washers and kind of get situated here so I can put them all back on. All right, guys, so I got the number six started on there. Now I'm going to move up to the next one. I'll just grab a new washer as I go. set the washer on there this might not be the best way to do it to be honest it's hard not to lose these things line it up with the hole okay got that one started so far so good all right number three which is one that we worked on that was leaking or this is number four actually my bad third from the back it was leaking from this 
part, so. All right, so now you can start tightening them down. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory now. You just you got all of them started. Now you can tighten them down. You got to be careful with them. You do not want to over tighten them. That is a thing. Once they get snug, right there. Snug. It's kind of scary whenever it gets to a certain point, so you really don't want to chance it. Daisy, what? And just like that, we tighten down all the banjo bolts for the return line. And it'll kind of wipe a little bit of that down. And then we will try to connect some of these injection li or, or injector lines, but we do have to bleed them first. But I already know this one's going to be a pain, so I'm going to try and get that one somewhat started. Alright, so I have fixed the kink in my lift pump feed line. And now I'm probably going to crank the truck a little bit and try and bleed some of these lines. I got the one connected that was the tough one, I, I believe. I think it's connected, so. I'm going to, it's hard to do, it, do this with one person. Usually I get the front three or the back three, whichever come first. I, I usually get them all bled, connect those, get the front three, connect those, and it usually goes pretty smooth that way. So basically you just need fuel coming out of all the lines, connect the lines, then you should be good. Hopefully. So I'm gonna get to that. I'm probably I might set you guys up back here to watch the watch me crank it and see. But this stuff does kind of get everywhere. It gets on your windshield, it gets all over my nicely polished valve cover blocks and stuff. So it's kinda messy. There's probably a better way to do it. I I'm probably gonna set some rags over the top of the where the injectors are so it doesn't spray everywhere. That's about the best way I've seen to do it. So probably gonna Start doing that and clean up a little bit of my stuff first and then start because I don't want stuff sitting all over it whenever I'm cranking it. Because uh, it'll fall in the great abyss. So with that being said, let's get to it. Alright guys, I went ahead and finished up the install and it didn't go as planned. Both injectors were still leaking like crazy, more than before. So I took the line, the two lines back off and went from 55 foot-pounds to 64 and maybe even a little more, maybe up to 67 and they look to still be leaking number four doesn't look like it is but number three still is for sure so I'm gonna go get some brake clean and clean those off real good and find out exactly where it's coming from because it didn't get any better in fact it probably just got worse so if I did fix my kink and my lift pump line which is good but yeah that's how that ended so the torque spec is like 43 44 45 it's somewhere in there anywhere from there and with thin washers for aftermarket injectors nobody ever seems to have any luck with taking them to that everybody always has to torque them higher a lot of people say 55 is where they end up good that's why I did the first time and they were leaking like a sieve like they didn't even try to seal up so took them to 64 we're going to drive it a little bit and get them hot and maybe they'll stop, but if not, we, we're going to have to do something. So, that's it for this one. 
Not a very successful one, but we did get some stuff done. So until next time, we'll see you guys.